The second time was not the charm and SLS hasn't launched again. What will happen now? I'll be trying to answer that question. This is your Artemis One launch edition of Tomorrow Space News. The day didn't get off to the smoothest of starts as tanking operations were plagued with another hydrogen leak. The launch team tried to troubleshoot it three times by heating up the interface and then thrashing it with cryogenic propellant, but it still wouldn't work. So instead, they continued with a slow manual fill. The team in charge of the fueling still couldn't get the quick disconnect to seal though, and they recommended a no-go for today's launch attempt. After some discussions with the launch director, Charlie Blackwell-Thompson, the decision was made. We'd be scrubbing for the day. The liquid hydrogen tank only reaching 11% capacity by this point, which is 89% less than you want. Now, although SLS was scrubbed for today, this isn't the end of the September launch window where Orion can reach the moon from the Kennedy Space Center. Realistically, with a quick 48 hour turnaround, 2112 UTC on Monday and 2257 UTC on Tuesday will be available to the launch teams before a rollback to the VAB is required. Both of the windows are shorter, however, with the former being 90 minutes long and the latter being a mere 24 minutes long, meaning that any technical blip during the final count will have a bigger impact on the time left to try again in the window. There is also a third option, which is rollback straight away. That would be a shame, but if SLS keeps encountering these hydrogen leaks, it could be the only option for repairs. At the time of writing, no definitive conclusion has been announced, but expect a press conference at 2100 UTC today, September 3rd, once the mission management team has met up. When we have new information, I'll be sure to add a pinned comment to this video. It'll be Monday, Tuesday or October. Also, I can confirm it wasn't my fault. I'm wearing my green NASA t-shirt again, and it was an Engine 3's temperature sensor. Before we wrap up this short update, thank you to the citizens of tomorrow. This lovely bunch supports the show financially and they receive some epic perks as well. For more information on that, head to join.tomorrow.tv or the join button below and you can see what the Escape Velocity, Orbital, Suborbital and Ground Support citizens as well as Neurostream received. This update may be ending but the next week isn't and here is what to expect over the next week on tomorrow. On Monday, I'll be returning with the standard space news update with updates on SLS, SpaceX and space traffic. On Wednesday, Dr. Tamitha Scove will be returning with space weather and on Friday, we'll be back with a live show. Hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks for watching and goodbye.